Welcome everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, tip of the day. Today is uh, day 75 of the tip of the day. Um, today I wanted to actually, um, so today is July, uh, not July, August 3rd. And we just had a Facebook Live Q&A um, on August 2nd. So you, um, if you want to watch the replays, just uh, watch it um, on YouTube, the channel we have for this Facebook, Facebook group. Uh, because most of the videos that I produce, I go upload it on YouTube for historical purposes. So you can always go watch it if you miss something on YouTube. So, um, we were discussing this uh, portion about um, archetypes and how do we pick our archetypes, right? So I wanted to actually go through that process one more time. I know one of the videos may contain the same content, but I will try and explain it a little bit more. So what I know from, um, so, the reason why I know about anything about this is I took a course with Carolyn Mace and Dr. Norm Shealy called uh, The Science of Medical Intuition. And in that course, it's an introduction to medical intuition, but the main focus of the course is actually to uh, figure out our own archetypes. So what Carolyn Mace says is all of us have these, um, as an experience of the soul, we may have like 30, 40 different archetypes as part of our soul. Like uh, once we, um, uh, the soul embodied this form, then um, it's living out like 30, 40 archetypes. And out of that, I've said this before, that the default uh, archetype that everyone has is the victim, the uh, wood, the child archetype, the victim, child, um, saboteur, and uh, prostitute. All of us have it. So even if you say, oh, I don't have that prostitute archetype, even I have that prostitute archetype. And I'll explain, maybe towards the end, I'll explain why I say um, even I have the uh, prostitute ar archetype. So, um, um, the part that I wanted to explain, now let me get back to the part I wanted to explain. So what she says is, um, now imagine yourself, she says, go uh, way up, 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 let me take you way up into wherever our soul returns to, right? Once the, yesterday we were talking about when we, um, when the soul leaves this body, it goes through a life review. Like it, it, within, like if you, there's no time in the timeless realm, but in um, like maybe in 10 seconds or one second, it goes through the complete life review. And um, both Anita and Murjani, like you will know this from uh, people who've had near death experience. I have not died, so I don't know. Uh, I'm just repeating something that uh, I, I've learned from people who've had um, near death experiences. Um, I've taken a course with Dr. Eben Alexander. Um, if y'all remember, Gracie, Gracie and I took a course, I think in 2020 with Dr. Eben Alexander and Karen Noel um, about um, his experience. And during the coursework, he talks about this life review that as the soul is leaving uh, the body, it goes through a life review. And the life review is not so much as uh, you are gonna experience what you did, you're gonna experience like uh, what, how you acted and what the effect of your action was on the other person. So if you were a, a child that uh, through tra tantrums as a child, you will see your mother's or father's reaction as uh, when you threw tantrums, right? So now as it's exiting, so with your guides and your, uh, uh, you will get assistance from your guides and uh, 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 all the angels as to what you need to do. Like you'll start selecting, what am I going to do um, in my next lifetime? So um, let's say, um, let's call this heaven. It, it's not actually heaven, this the place, let's call it where, um, 
I wouldn't even call where source consciousness is. It's uh, more like wherever your soul will exit, um, uh, in that place, you will be surrounded by all the family of soul groups. This is again something uh, Kelly talked about yesterday in um, um, in the Facebook Live, that you will be surrounded, uh, you, you will have your soul group with you and then you will start selecting your lesson, right? Um, in um, Sacred Contracts, the book, uh, Carolyn Mays talks about, uses the example of Helen Keller and her teacher. That's the example I've used. So what she says is, as we are uh, selecting the lesson, supposing my lesson is, um, I need to learn um, uh, how to get over my anger, or my lesson is how to get over my um, uh, wounded child. That's an archetype. So wounded child mean, implying that as children, things happen to us that are traumatic, and then we have to overcome it. So what I my soul would have done is she says that we go through, like almost imagine like a drawer full of uh, these cookie cutter stencils. So they may be a child archetype stencil, like just the cutout of the uh, cookie, not like dense, but like just the uh, aluminum or whatever uh, porcelain cookie cutter you may have. Uh, imagine that. That was like a beautiful visual analogy that each stencil is the same for each one. The stencil is the same. Like the child archetype in me got the same stencil as you and anybody else that is listening to this um, uh, face, um, Facebook Live, right? So, uh, so I would have picked up the, along with the victim, the saboteur, the prostitute, the, um, uh, the saboteur, victim, prostitute, and uh, child archetype, I would have um, picked up even like other archetypes as well. And I'm in the process of figuring out what are my other archetypes. That's what the course was about, the science of medical intuition. If I can figure out what are the different 20, 30 archetypes um, that I can see? I can see the wounded child very easily. I can see the saboteur and the prostitute very easily. I can see uh, the victim very easily, right? They're very easy to identify within ourselves. The other energy types are difficult. And the reason why archetypes exist is source when it's split into the billions of um, forms, energy forms, um, it also incarnated into these archetypes so that we would have that contrast and we can experience life with that contrast, right? So it also is split into these thousands, they may be thousands of archetypes. Um, actually, um, she talked about, um, like we have this uh, new archetype because of uh, social media, which is called the networker archetype, that they go to work, come back, and all they do is email, all they're communicating with is this um, email, social media. Um, they spend their whole evening uh, in social media, right? So that's a networker archetype. If you're somebody who spends their whole time, uh, whatever spare time that they have, that you have, in um, uh, on social media, then you are a networker type uh, archetype. So we pick up these stencils, right? What was um, incredible about this is what she says is, okay, so you pick up these different, like say 20, 30 uh, cookie, different cookie cutter stencils you picked up and now your soul is ready um, to take birth. And before your soul is ready to take birth, you will discuss with your soul group as to, oh, I need a lesson in, um, like I had a, um, a strong um, resentment towards verbal and physical abuse. So I would have had a contract with my mother that my mother has to be born. And then she would have to uh, be my mother so that she could bring that lesson to me that I have resentment within me, right? So, um, that's how you negotiate um, between all your soul groups. And so each one goes, I'll go first. And the most incredible part is it's not like once our spirit leaves our body 
like you're getting troubled, right? Like, and this may be very um, uh, unknown uh, to people who follow Christianity and don't believe in re reincarnation, don't believe that. Uh, so this will be like, who will, oh, this is so weird, right? I can't believe that this happens. I don't think this happens. We all just go to heaven or we all just go to hell. Actually, there's no hell. Uh, we all go to the same place. So when we leave, when the spirit leaves the body, so our suffering is because of our intellect, our ego. Once spirit leaves, it's back to that um, the one consciousness. It, it's back to um, infinite love, right? Uh, that's what uh, Anita Murjani said. That's what Dr. Evan Alexander said about the near-death experience. That immediately you experience this unconditional love. That love you can never experience anywhere else right on this earth you will always get a little bit of contamination of love but this is unconditional love the one that maybe your dog or your pet gives you right unconditionally so anyway so you will decide with your soul group now you have 30 40 of these stencils right um of i'm i'm a networker i'm a uh, I'm part networker because I do interact with social media. So part networker, part victim, part ch wounded child, part uh, saboteur, part um, uh, something else, right? And, and maybe like I'm a mi mistake because I do spiritual teaching. So um, I have all these stencils and then I've decided with my soul group. And the soul group also works with you out of unconditional love because they want you to, um, it almost says you, they want you to graduate to the PhD level, right? You're in a first grade or third grade or fourth grade, but they want to get you to the PhD level. So all of us, the, the main lesson is to get to that unconditional love. And my experience is, um, especially with uh, Dr. Joe's teachings is that to know of that oneness, that interconnectedness, that I'm inter, we are interbeing, as Thich Nhat Han says, right? There's interbeingness with everything. There's no um, me and you. There's just an interconnectedness. There's just energy that's connected to the other. So anyway, uh, we take these stencils and then we are going to be, we have these 30, 40 archetypes and that those archetypes, some of them may be uh, positive and some of them are going to be negative, right? They're going to work against, uh, create the negative polarity for us. So we are born and um, out of unconditional love, our soul group is born on earth as well to provide us with those lessons. That is really, really important um to know uh in sacred contracts Carolyn may says uh, the soul group will say we love you so much that we will take birth uh before you to um present you with that lesson so my mother would have out of unconditional love for me she would have said i'll i'll be born before you to um go through the pain body that um, experience that she did so that I can bring this lesson to you. So the most important thing why I wanted to do this video today was um, so once we are born with that stencils, one um, uh, important information that uh, Carolyn Mace gives in Sacred Contracts is so yeah, I have a wounded child, you have a wounded child, um, 30 million or a billion of us may have the wounded child archetype. But each wounded child, though it has a stencil, it will have its own experience. And it is taking that, that information and giving that feedback back, right? Back to source. So you imagine, or uh, try and um, have a knowing of this, that consciousness is trying to experience itself through your form. And as it's experiencing itself, it's going, okay, I'm the wounded child. I experienced this um, uh, physical and verbal abuse. Now, how am I going to, uh, am I going to transcend it? Or am I going to overcome? Like, 
um, the wounded child archetype will rise up as children. Uh, it's rising up. It's experiencing this, oh, when I was four years old, this happened, eight years old, nine years old, 11 years old, 12 years old. But then the victim archetype will take over and kind of like, um, it's going to go, oh, now, now I'm a victim, right? Poor little me, uh, all this happened to me. So all these energies are working in us in that um, as part of our soul, they're working. All these energies are working in us. Um, I kind of, uh, um, uh, the analogy I would draw is, as uh, Sadhguru says, right, we have a karmic body at the energy level. We have an er energetic body called the karmic body. So those imprints are left, the memory imprints of what a victim is, what a, um, uh, uh, what a wounded child is, what a um, uh, prostitute is, is in uh, the imprint is left. So the important thing that she said was, then the, if we are 1 billion people that are, have the wounded child archetype, we almost like act like, um, uh, you know, terminals. If you remember when you all went to um, the gate agent like uh, years ago, I haven't traveled in a while, but the gate agent has a terminal, right? The green screen uh, terminal with uh, all the flight information is uh, provided on the green screen. So there's a supercomputer where this green screen is feeding. So we are feeding the supercomputer because, um, Sources learning how is the wounded child healing, right? The more we heal, the more of these 1 billion people heal their wounded child, the more we kind of erase my knowing is we erase the wounded child out of this whole planet. That energy formation, we, we erase it. Um, the, the other thing that she said was, and I'll try and... Um, um, so you, you may say, okay, I, I don't think uh, this archetype exists, right? So she says that, and a lot of people, Elizabeth April has said, if you talk to channelers, uh, I mean, listen to channelers, they will say that there's a consciousness grid around us, um, around the earth. So imagine yourself like surrounded by the uh, a globe, and then each one has a point, right? Um, uh, like a latitude and longitude. And one point may be the victim archetype. One point may be the, that's how you you are connected to that archetypal uh, energy. And it's just energy. You're, you're just um, experiencing it. You're just interacting with it. So uh, the most important thing was that, that the wounded child that, if we, um, we are sending that feedback out back to that supercomputer. So if you have the victim identity and if you overcome the victim identity, then you're sending that information back to the supercomputer and kind of helping the next person with the victim identity. Because if they connect at vibrationally to that information, right, they may be able to resolve. So that is how important you are when you overcome your challenges when you overcome all these uh, so-called negative um, uh, life situations, then you are putting that information in that supercomputer, each one, different supercomputer, like you're uh, putting that information in the victim supercomputer, you're putting that information in the saboteur supercomputer, you're putting that information in the um, child uh, uh, supercomputer, that this is how you heal. And my experience or my feeling is because of how much I've healed myself, the more we heal, we allow another person to heal. And we uh, provide that uh, uh, information, like that information is accessible. So it almost is like, um, I don't know if you all have heard of the Akashic field. It almost may be that we are uploading it back to the Akashic field and saying, okay, this is how I um, heal my uh, child archetype, wounded child archetype. Well, this is, um, and um, what Carolyn May says is the wounded child needs, uh, there's a wounded healer uh, archetype. So it, that's another archetype in me, the wounded healer. 
that I know. So if you have the wounded healer archetype in you, then you need the wounded, the child needs a wound for to become a healer towards the uh, later part of the life, right? So you may say, oh, why is this child um, undergoing this abuse? Or why is this child uh, undergoing these uh, traumatic life situations? Because that child needs that wound to heal so that they can become a healer. They have that archetype. So uh, more than looking at the child and saying, why does this child have the wounded, uh, why do they have this trauma? Say, um, I truly believe that child, you have the potential to heal. Um, yeah, you may have experienced this trauma. That is one thing. And um, I have a feeling the more we heal and learn how to feel and get to this knowing, and I'm not talking about conceptually uh, saying, oh, I love everyone or I love everything, right? April also always states in our Facebook Live Q&As that we need to get to that unconditional love. And one part of more than unconditional love is all of us need to know I'm not talking about conceptually, have an inner knowing presence out of your awareness, out of this uh, divinity within you that we are one, that oneness. The more we can understand that we are one and there's oneness, the more uh, we live that oneness out, the more this planet will heal. So if you may say, oh, uh, this uh, child trafficking is happening, this mass shooting is happening, this thing is happening, no. Heal, heal that, all that within you so that you can get to that oneness and understand the perfection in everything, right? So that is my tip for today is learn to heal yourself. Learn to figure out what are the archetypes within you and then learn to heal them. So that if, if it is uh, like the, my uh, wounded healer archetype is a positive archetype. So I really don't need to, uh, I need to live out the healing part, right? Heal more and more people. And that's why these conversations is try and heal more and more people. But um, uh, that's the, um, you, you know, that's my main, um, when, when I say I need, I want peace and abundance for all, um, that's what I want y'all to experience is this oneness and out of this oneness bring abundance. So know that um, you are sending back. I, I'm, uh, when um, Carolyn May says uh, back to a supercomputer, I kind of think um, she calls it a server, but I think it is back to the Akashic field. You're taking that information, you are filled with information and you're taking that information, um, sending it back. You're uploading it. You download, you upload, you download, you upload. And if you think that you are done with this lifetime and you're done with the lesson, no. Um, the more uh, people say that they're done, the more they have a chance of um, coming back into the next lifetime. So with that, have a uh, spectacular day. Many blessings, much love. Eternally grateful for all the support. Thank you. Let me see if any anybody commented. I guess nobody's watching yet. Live, uh, I will talk to you next time on, uh, I guess it's going to be 76. So we'll talk again. Thank you so much. Bye. Much love.